Hey everybody, this is Alex for the Hidden Triforce, and today, I'm going to be comparing the plots of Star Wars and The Legend of Zelda. Go nerds! So, you might remember a little thing from your freshman year of English called The Hero's Journey, or Monomyth. This is a series of plot points, kind of like a template, that many stories dealing with the hero's adventures follow. Homer's The Odyssey uses it, George Lucas' Star Wars films use it, and even some Zelda titles use it as well. For the sake of time, I'm just going to be going over the plots of Star Wars Episode IV, A New Hope, and The Legend of Zelda and the Ocarina of Time. Now let's get started. This is the humble beginning of the grand adventure, the ordinary world. In Star Wars, the galaxy is oppressed by the evil empire, which rules without any opposition. In Ocarina, Link lives a simple childhood in the Kokiri forest amongst many other children. He might not have fit in, but there was rarely a threat to Kokiri life, and most definitely no chance for change in the foreseeable future. Of course, the simple life is quickly brought to an end by the call to adventure. This is when the hero is suddenly made aware of a problem by an external source. In George Lucas's film, this occurs when R2-D2 projects the hologram of Leia asking for help. While in Zelda, Link receives a vision in the form of a dream that shows Hyrule in peril, a young girl in a hurry, and an evil-looking man with a rather polygonal nose. When he awakes, he is then greeted by everybody's favorite fairy friend, Navi, who tells him that he needs to see the Deku Tree immediately. Next, there is typically a refusal to the call of action, like when Luke decided not to join Obi-Wan in leaving his home Tatooine. This event isn't specifically shown in the story of Ocarina of Time, but since the player takes on the role of the protagonist, it is up to them to choose whether or not they will refuse this call. But like, why would you do that? The next step in the hero's journey is to meet with the mentor. Obi-Wan is the one who guides Luke in A New Hope, while the Deku Tree does the same for Link. Then soon enough, our heroes are forced to make a change. Skywalker's aunt and uncle are found dead, we're treated to some of John Williams' very best, and Luke is able to leave his home to embark on a galactic quest. For Link, the Deku Tree is killed by the Gerudo King Ganondorf, and he journeys into Hyrule not only because his mentor told him to do so, but also because the journey has become personal. He symbolically crosses the threshold over a bridge. A literal bridge. A very good attempt. All of a sudden, our heroes find themselves in a whole new world. It's a whole new world we live in. I'm surprised that I didn't go with an Aladdin reference there. And with the new world comes a handful of new experiences, tests, allies, and enemies. Think about Luke in the cantina. In just this one scene, Luke meets Han and Chewbacca, but also sees how dangerous things could get for him once the stormtroopers start to close in on them. Things are equally as tough for Link, as he makes his way through Dodongo's cavern and Jabu Jabu's belly while also making friends with the Goron and Zora people. And these tests have to accumulate to something, of course. One big event that makes it impossible for our hero to ever return to their safe little lives back home. This innermost cave is what forces them to commit to the journey. For our rebels, the cave takes the form of the Death Star, where they have to rescue Princess Leia. For our buddy in Hyrule, things are brought down to the wire after collecting the spiritual stones and heading back to the Temple of Time. Then things get real. Right at the gates of Hyrule, Link's nightmare becomes a reality as we find Princess Zelda galloping away from the kingdom with her advisor, Impa. She throws the titular ocarina towards Link and then escapes from Ganondorf who is running after her. He then confronts our hero. This event is also called the Ordeal and leads to a symbolic death and rebirth. But we'll get to that in just one moment. For our friends in a galaxy far, far away, their ordeal is when they find themselves in the Death Star's trash compactor. They should have been crushed right then and there, but after they're saved by the droids, they begin to work together to escape the Empire's stronghold. After that shebang, the heroes are granted with a reward. Link's reward just so happens to be the legendary Master Sword. This is the only sword that is able to help him to complete his quest. Unfortunately, he wasn't old enough to wield it in his child form, so he slept for seven years until he was able to fulfill the prophecies of the Hero of Time. His awakening as an adult is his rebirth. The reward for our rebels, on the other hand, is simply escaping the Death Star. Well, that's great. Plus, Obi-Wan gets killed, so that's fair. The Road Back. This is like the final stretch. This is the rising action towards the final events of the Hero's Quest, just like when all the Rebels were planning to destroy the Death Star, or, likewise, when Link awakens all of the Sages in order to defeat Ganondorf, who at this point had taken over all of Hyrule. But what all this work comes down to is one thing, the final fight. All of what the Hero has learned comes to this. After a great space dogfight, Skywalker learns to use the Force and destroys the Death Star. While Link masters the use of the Triforce, it fulfills his duty as the Hero of Time by slaying Ganon and sealing him away with the help of the Sages. Finally, our heroes get to reap the benefits of their labor, 
the Rebels get recognition for their triumphs over the Empire, and Link gets to kiss the girl of his, uh, uh no, that, that, that doesn't happen. Um, he gets to relive the peaceful days of his childhood. Oh, no. That, that doesn't happen either. Well, I guess Link kind of got the short end of the stick here. But that's it. Isn't it interesting how two fantastic stories are this similar? And that's not even everything. Can you think of more ways to compare these two sources of nerdism? Or maybe other stories that follow the same plot structure? Leave a comment below. Now if you liked this video, be sure to subscribe to the Hidden Triforce for more like it. Or you can visit my personal channel at Ganon23000 for more in-depth videos about The Legend of Zelda. Until next time, thanks for watching, and may the Triforce be with you.